couple minutes to show. Two to three minutes to show long. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وعلى التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ربنا علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وزدنا علما وإخلاصا ودينا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام First of all, my dear brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And welcome to this lecture, seminar, event seminar, inshallah ta'ala, where we are going to discuss together the topic and the ibadah, the act of worship of al-adhan and the iqamah And as we know, my dear brothers and sisters, this great ibadah that many of us, we don't pay attention to. Or if you want to say we don't give this act of worship the value it deserves. Sometimes we don't know the rulings of al adhan, we don't know how to make adhan, we belittle and this ibadah. And this ibadah is extremely important since it is very closely attached and related to the pillar of Islam, which is a salah. Every single prayer we perform 
five days a day, five, five times a day, we should call a then. And this is the announcement of the timing of the prayer. So it is a great ibadah, it is a ritual, sha'ira min sha'air al Islam, it is an apparent ritual of Islam. It is very, it, it is a sign of Islam. When Adhan is being called, it is a sign of Islam. Al Adhan is very, very powerful, my dear brothers and sisters. And I assume that you heard that so many non Muslim they became Muslim only when they heard Al Adhan. By the fact that they heard Al Adhan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala softened their hearts and they accepted Al Islam as a religion. Many of them. We know many of them. So Al Adhan, my dear brothers and sisters, is a way of da'wah, is a way to call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only by calling Adhan the way it should be. So we have to be aware of that. We have to learn as much as we can about this ibadah, about this ritual, insha'Allah ta'ala. So in today's lesson, insha'Allah ta'ala, we're going to touch upon a number of items, a number of uh, points about Al Adhan, all the aspects of Adhan. We are going to talk about the virtues of Al Adhan, the wisdoms behind Al Adhan, uh, the history or the leg legislation of Al Adhan, how and when the Adhan has been legislated, and we are going to talk about the rulings of Al Adhan. The rulings of Al Adhan, uh, as well as the, the requirements of the Mu'adhan, the caller of Al Adhan, the one who is calling Adhan, there are some requirements that he should meet. And the Sunan of Al Adhan, the recommendation of Al Adhan, insha'Allah ta'ala. So, first of all, Al Adhan is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by announcing the prayer time using specific words and sentences. So this is the definition of Al Adhan. Fiqhi definition of Al Adhan is worshipping Allah. So it is an act of worship. When we call Adhan, we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we get the reward. Any act of worship, we get a reward. So by announcing the prayer time. So Al Adhan actually, it is the announcement of the prayer time. It is a sign that the prayer time is in. For example, we are announcing Dhuhr uh, Adhan. So this is a sign that Dhuhr time is in. Once we start Adhan, Dhuhr time is in. Using specific words and sentences or phrases. So there are very specific sentences that we need to use. Otherwise, our Adhan is incorrect and invalid. And we are going to learn these phrases, insha'Allah ta'ala. Al-Iqamah is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by announcing the, the, the Salah, right? Using specific words and sentences to get up and line up for salah. So al-iqama is not only to announce that the time is in, but actually is to call people to line up to get ready for the prayer. We are praying now. So this is the difference between al-adhan and al-iqama. And we are going to talk later on, inshallah, about the difference between al-adhan and al-iqama in terms of phrases in terms of way, how to announce Al-Adhan, how to announce Al-Iqamah, are they similar or different? Or We are going to talk about that, inshallah. Legislation of Al-Adhan. I have a question for you. Do you know in which year Al-Adhan and Al-Iqamah has been legislated? After migration or before? After, for sure. So, 
So <clears throat> Al-Adhan has been legislated after migration. Right after migration, the first year of Hijrah. The first year of Hijrah, Al-Adhan has been made obligatory or sunnah mu'akkada as we are going to discuss inshallah later on upon the Muslim community. And there was a story behind uh, Al-Adhan inshallah about the legislation of Al-Adhan. So the story is mentioned in this hadith. So I am going to uh, say the hadith in Arabic <coughs> and then to translate it inshallah in English. Hadith Abdullah ibn Zayd ibn Abd Rabbi لما أجمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يضرب بالناقوس وهو كاره له لموافقته النصارى So سيدنا, this is a sahabi, a companion His name is Zayd ibn Abdullah He, Abdullah ibn Zayd, I'm sorry Abdullah ibn Zayd, he mentioned in this hadith that when the Prophet وسلم, was intending to use a bell, to ring a bell to announce the prayer time. Because they were discussing the Prophet وسلم, and his companions عنهم, جميعاً, how to announce the prayer time in Medina. They established, they built the masjid, Al Masjid al Nabawi. And now they need to call people and to let everyone know about the prayer time. So they were discussing and the idea came out that we need to use as the Christians are using. They are using what? A bell, right? A bell. Ring the bell and people, they come to pray. And he said, Abdullah ibn Zayd, so the Prophet ﷺ was intending to do so. However, he disliked this idea, this opinion. He was not in favor of this opinion. But وسلم, he did not find any other alternative. So he was intending to do so, to have a, a, a bell to be rung and to announce the prayer time. طاف به من الليل طائف وأنا نائم رجل عليه ثوبان أخضران. He said, Abdullah ibn Zayd, while I was sleeping at night, in my dream, I saw a man. He saw a man in his dream. عليه ثوبان أخضران. He was wearing two garments. Two green garments. وفي يده ناقوس. And he was holding in his hands ناقوس, a bell. يحمله. قال فقلت يا عبد الله أتبيع الناقوس. So in his dream, Abdullah ibn Zayd was asking this man. He told him, are you selling this bell? قال وما تصنع به. The man told him, and what are you doing? What are you going to do with this bell? Why you, you need this bell? قال قلت ندعو به إلى الصلاة. He told him, we want to announce the prayer time by ringing the bell. So the man said, قال أفلا أدلك على خير من ذلك? He told him. Shouldn't, shouldn't I tell you something better than that? Better than ringing the bell? قال فقلت بلا. He said to him, yes, let me know. قال تقول الله أكبر, الله أكبر, الله أكبر, الله أكبر. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله, أشهد أن محمد رسول الله, أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. So he mentioned to him 
these phrases of al adhan So, قال فلما أصبحت أتيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فأخبرته بما رأيت. He said, Abdullah ibn Zayd, after he woke up in the morning, he rushed to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he told him about his dream. فقال إنها لرؤيا حق إن شاء الله. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told him, it is a true dream. إنها لرؤيا حق. A true dream, إن شاء الله, by the will of Allah. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was glad and happy to hear this dream coming from Abdullah ibn Zayd. And he said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, فقل مع فقم مع بلال فألق عليه ما رأيت. He told him, go with Bilal and teach him what you have seen in your dream. فإنه أندى صوتا منك. But because indeed Bilal he has a better voice than you, has a louder voice than you. Let Bilal make a then. قام قال فقلت فقمت مع بلال فجعلت ألقيه عليه ويؤذن به. He said Abdullah ibn Zayd. So I walked with Bilal and I started saying the adhan to Bilal and Bilal was making the adhan loudly. Right? فسمع ذلك عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه عمر رضي الله عنه he heard the adhan for the first time وهو في بيت he was in his house فخرج يجر رداءه يقول والذي بعثك بالحق لقد رأيت مثل الذي أري so he he was coming, rushing to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar ibn al-Khattab. He left his home rushing. He was dragging his garment because he was rushing, you know. And he told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَالَّذِي بَعَثَكَ بِالْحَقِّ I swear by the one who sent you by the truth. I swear by Allah, in other words. لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ مِثْلَ الَّذِي أُرِي Indeed, I saw the same dream. Subhanallah. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, he saw the same dream as Abdullah ibn Zayd. The same exact phrases of al-adhan. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ The Prophet sallallahu said, Then praised you to Allah. Alhamdulillah. That two of my companions, they saw this dream, and since then, the Adhan became legislated in our religion, and we are going to discuss what is the ruling of Al Adhan, insha'Allah ta'ala. The wisdom behind the legislation of Al Adhan. But before we go there, Al-Adhan did or is Al-Adhan mentioned in the Quran or no? Do you have any idea? This is one verse. وَأَذِّن فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ The verb is وَأَذِّن Call all people to the pilgrimage. So this command was to Prophet Ibrahim. عليه السلام وأذن في الناس بالحج. so أذن in Arabic language, the, the, the linguistically it means to call, to call. وأذن في الناس بالحج call all people to the pilgrimage. there are couple other verses. say it again. أذنك. yeah, but about calling to the prayer. Specifically, not the verb itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, وَإِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ or إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ فَسْعَوْ O you who believe, 
whenever the call is being made for the prayer on the day of Friday, so just answer this call. Nudia and Nida. And Nida is the same as Al Adhan, is the call, is the call to the prayer. In another surah, in Surah Al Maid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا نَادَيْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ اتَّخَذُوهَا هُزُوًا وَلَعِبًا And whenever you call people to the prayer using al adhan they just take it as as huzwan wal'iba so al munafiqin and al kuffar they started mocking al adhan they started mocking the prayer so these are a few a few verses from al quran al karim where al adhan uh, has been mentioned so going back to the wisdom behind the legislation of al adhan the first one is to announce a tawheed what is the wisdom behind making adhan allahu akbar loudly publicly let everyone hear so first of all we are announcing a tawheed and if we look to the sentences the phrases of al adhan they are all about a tawheed Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, right? And then, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah I testify that the messenger Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And then, Hayya ala salah come to, to the prayer. Hayya ala al-falah, come to prosperity. Uh, or Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar again, Allah is the greatest, La ilaha illallah. So it is all about a tawheed, kalimat al tawheed, and testifying that there is no God but Allah, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah. So this is number one. Number two, the adhan is an announcement for the time of the prayer is in. So we actually announcing that the prayer time is in. So this is the wisdom, the purpose behind al adhan. When we make adhan, this is a sign that this is the prayer time. Now the prayer time is in. Are we allowed to make adhan before the prayer time is in? Of course, no. After the prayer time is in? Yes. Yes, <laughs> right? So actually, the announcement of the prayer time is by calling Adhan. This is number two. The third wisdom behind the Adhan is that the Adhan is an alert from, for the heedless and a reminder for the forgetful to perform prayer. Sometimes you are heedless of the prayer. Sometimes you don't pray, right? Sometimes you could be a Muslim, but you don't pray. What happens sometimes if the Adhan is really powerful, uh, it can shake you if you have faith in your heart that you hear the Adhan and you don't go to the masjid and to pray, you feel guilty. And many, many people, they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they started uh, performing prayer only because they heard a powerful adhan not only adhan but a very powerful adhan and reminder for the forgetful sometimes you know it doesn't happen here because you don't have the, the adhan to be called publicly but in other Muslim countries it happens and I assume that it happens with many of us that sometimes you are busy with something else you are busy with work with anything else and suddenly you hear the Adhan so then you remember that it is Dhuhr time or Maghrib time I should go to the prayer right otherwise you don't pay attention to the prayer and you miss the prayer so one of the wisdoms of Al Adhan is to remind people about al-salah 
And as we mentioned earlier, that al adhan also is a sign of Islam. Is a sign of Islam. Whenever you hear al adhan, this is a sign of the religion of Islam. It is a very apparent ritual. There are some rituals, but they are not apparent. Not everyone can see them. However, al adhan is one of these uh, rituals that are very apparent. Now, we're gonna move to the next item, which is the virtue of al adhan We have a couple a hadith, inshallah ta'ala, to reflect upon where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned some of the virtues of the Adhan. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لو يعلم الناس ما في النداء والصف الأول ثم لم يجدوا إلا أن يستهموا عليه لاستهموا عليه It is narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said If people came to know, if only people came to know the blessing of calling Adhan and standing in the first row in the prayer and could only draw lots for it, they would draw lots for it. So if only they knew the blessing, the virtue of calling Adhan and being in the first row in the prayer, they would do anything only to do it to get this, this reward and we understand from this hadith that the blessing and the reward the virtue of calling adhan is beyond our imagination is beyond our imagination because if we know if we really know the blessing of calling adhan we do whatever we can do to call adhan or and to be in the first row. Of course, uh, the Prophet ﷺ here is encouraging us to compete, to call adhan. However, there are some requirements and some et etiquettes and some rulings of the adhan that we should know before we go forward and to call adhan. The second hadith talking about the virtues of the adhan عن معاوية رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول المؤذنون أطول الناس أعناقا يوم القيامة The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said المؤذنون the callers of the adhan those who used to be those who used to call Adhan in this dunya, they will have the longest necks on the Day of Judgment. They will have the longest necks on the Day of Judgment. And we all know on the Day of Judgment, as the Prophet ﷺ told us, where everyone will be struggling, where everyone is, some of the, of the people will, uh, will be drowning, into their sweats, right? So al muazzinun will have a, the longest necks on the day of judgment. This is another blessing and virtue of calling adhan. It is recorded also to the sunnah that the caller of al adhan is to increase the volume of his voice while calling al adhan. For that nothing that hears his voice while calling the adhan from jinn or humans or ins or anything at all except for that they, that they will testify for his call as witness on the day of resurrection. This is another blessing of calling adhan. Everything that hears your voice calling adhan will testify and will be witness 
for you, not against you on the day of judgment. The sins of the caller of Al-Adhan are forgiven as far as his sound reaches and everything that hears his call, whether it is fresh or dry, will, will say like him and will be a witness for him on the day of resurrection. So this is according to the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and we have authentic hadith, a hadith statements said by the Prophet وسلم, that illustrate this, insha'Allah ta'ala. Do you have any question, any remark before we move on and to talk about the rulings, al-ahkam of al-adhan? Yes. I didn't say that. I said you can, you are allowed to make al adhan after the time is in. We can't, we cannot. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is only for Fajr prayer. For Fajr prayer, yes, is different. So it is uh, authentically narrated and recorded that in Fajr prayer, there, the, there will be two adhans in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu The first one uh, was called by Bilal Radiallahu Anhu, and the second used to be called by uh, Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiallahu anhu and the first one was only to remind people and to awaken them if they are still sleeping and for them to get ready for the prayer right and for those who are making tahajjud who are making qiyam al-layl to stop and to, to, to pray al-watr Salat al Watr as soon as possible so they get ready for Al Salat al Fajr. However, the second was the, the, the Adhan of Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum, and it was the actual Adhan when the time is in. That's why the Prophet said, La tu sallu ba'da adhani bilal fa innahu yu'adhinu bilayl. Do not take the Adhan of Bilal in Fajr prayer as the, 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 the official Adhan to pray after it. Because Bilal is making Adhan at night. It's still night. It is still not the time of Fajr. Right? So this the case only for Fajr prayer, inshallah. Say it again. Yeah, in, in, in some countries, they still have these two adhans, uh, but the condition is to make the first adhan at night. It is not the, the time of the adhan, it is before the time of the adhan. It is the, the, before the time of the prayer, yes. Some this is according to Hanafi Madhab, school, yes. We are coming to this, inshallah ta'ala. Yes. Three azans. Which madhab is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it could be ijtihad, yes, uh, from some ulama. And the one who started this ijtihad, uh, actually, uh, he was Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu in his time because the Muslim community 
uh, was growing and the number of people in Medina uh, grew in his time. So in Jumu'ah prayer, he used to send Mu'adhineen to the marketplace to announce the Adhan so people they can hear the Adhan. They can be ready to come to the Masjid. And then it, is, it, was, it was followed by another Adhan. So it could be the same uh, purpose uh, as Ijtihad, of course, of scholars and ulama. We move on, we move on inshallah. Rulings of Al Adhan. Ahkamu Al Adhan. It is very important for us, my dear brothers and sisters, to know Al Hukum, the ruling of Al Adhan. Every single act of worship that we do, that we perform, we need to have to know the ruling of this act of worship. So Al Adhan and Al Iqama as well are Fard Kifaya or Sunnah Mu'akkada according to some other schools of fiqh. So there is a disagreement here between schools of fiqh. Some of them, they said Al-Adhan is Fard Kifaya. What does it mean, Fard Kifaya? Fard Kifaya is communal obligation, is a communal obligation, just like Salat Al-Janazah. Uh, it means the individual is not required to perform this this ibadah, as long as there is a sufficient number of uh, community, Muslim community members who did it. So as long as there are some people performing adhan in our community, for example, in Latham, so as long as there is one individual at least calling adhan, so the others, alhamdulillah, you are not sinners. Right? However, if none of the Muslim community members performs Adhan, it becomes what? It becomes a sin upon every single one. Kulluna Athim. Right? So this is the definition of Fard al Kifaya. Just like Salat al Janazah. We pray Janazah. If there is a group of Muslim who performs Janazah, Alhamdulillah. The other people, they don't have to perform it. However, if no one performs janazah, so it becomes, the sin becomes upon every one of us. So this is the first opinion. The second opinion, they said it is not fard kifaya, it is not communal obligation, however it is a sunnah. It is recommended to call adhan, but it is not mandatory. It is highly recommended to do it. Whenever you can do it, just do it. But if you don't do it, nothing on you, nothing on the Muslim community. Right? So this is number one. Al-Adhan is either Fard Kifaya or Sunnah. Second, it is upon the man, not the woman. I am talking about calling Adhan, not upon the women. However, learning about the rulings of Adhan, attending sessions about Adhan is extremely recommended for everyone. I give you an example. For example, as, as, as you know, men, we are not concerned with women fiqh, right? We are not practicing things about women. But, it doesn't mean that we don't learn this fiqh of women. We, it doesn't mean that we seek the knowledge and we know the rulings. The same thing, right? So not practicing uh, uh, an act of worship, it doesn't mean that we should not learn about it, right? If I am poor, for example, I have nothing to give as charity. It doesn't mean that I learn about the rulings of giving sadaqah, the rulings of zakah, right? I should know, I should learn. And then I am not practicing this act of worship because for some reason. But it doesn't mean that I can learn the rulings, inshallah. So it is upon the man, not the woman. Here, there is a question. 
that raise. If a group of women, they are together, right? Only women. And they want to perform the prayer as jama'ah together. Are they allowed to pray together first? In jama'ah? Of course, yes. Right? Not as we perform, uh, but slightly different. However, are they allowed to call a then or no? Only women. And the voice will not be heard by anyone except women. Are they allowed to perform a then or not? No. No. Even if they are only women, they don't perform a then. They just pray. Right? Iqama as well. The same. They don't perform a then nor iqama. They just pray. Number three, while in the residence or in the journey. في الإقامة وعند السفر. So again, الأذان is فرض كفاية or سنة. Upon the man and while you are resident or you are traveling. Even when you are traveling on your way, it is recommended to make أذان. If your opinion is that the adhan is sunnah, if your opinion is that the adhan is fard kifaya, you have to make adhan, even when you are traveling. So it doesn't matter whether you, whether you are traveling or you are resident. Another thing here, al adhan is called only for the five daily prayers. We never perform adhan for Salat al-Janazah, for example, or Salat al-Istisqa, or Salat al-Eid, right? We don't perform Adhan for these Salawat. The Adhan should only be called for Salat, the daily five prayers. Fajr, I mean Subh, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, plus Jumu'ah. Because Jumu'ah, Tahillu Mahalla Dhuhr. Al-Jumu'ah, it, 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 it takes the place of Salat al-Dhuhr, right? So we are not allowed to make a then outside the fi five daily prayers. Yes. Yeah, even if you are by yourself, it is recommended. If you want to make a then, make a then, right? Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam he was alone by himself in the desert, right? In Mecca. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him, وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ No one would hear the voice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to make al adhan loudly, وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, عَلَيْكَ الْأَذَان uh, the convey of this message, of this announcement of the adhan is on us, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. The time of what? Calamity. Does it matter? It doesn't matter, right? If you are able to make adhan, right? I assume that if you are able to, to make prayer, to perform your prayer, and you should be all the time able to perform the prayer regardless your situation, you will be able to make adhan. So there is no difference, right? Whenever you are able to pray, just make adhan. It is not a must, as I said. It is a sunnah, at least, yes. Okay, so if you make adhan by yourself, it is recommended. So adhan and iqama, they have the same ruling, right? Uh, sunnah, sunnah. So if you call adhan, you, are, you have the choice to make adhan, to make iqama or not to make iqama, right? If you don't make adhan, are you allowed to make iqama? 
Yes, of course. Yeah. You might miss al-adhan, you don't make al-adhan, but you make al-iqamah. It is, it is allowable, it is permissible, right? So you can call both of them, adhan and the iqamah. You can miss one of them, and you, can, you are, uh, you are uh, allowed to miss both of them. You don't make adhan, you don't make iqamah, and you just pray, Allahu Akbar. You are allowed to do so as long as your opinion is al adhan is sunnah, right? Al adhan is sunnah, is recommended, it is not fard, Abdullah. You are talking about the phrases, are, are they the same or not? Okay. To be honest, I don't have a clear answer for your question. Is, is, we don't know. I just don't know. His question is that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught his Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam how to call Adhan, and we don't know how the way he performed Adhan in that time, right? For Hajj. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not teach his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how to call Adhan? There are some wisdoms behind the legislation and the way how the Adhan has been legislated by this dream of these two Sahaba. Wallahu a'lam. We don't know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that. And of course, uh, he could have taught his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Adhan straightforward with the phrases, with everything, as he taught him Al-Qur'an al kareem as he taught him Al-Adhkar, and so many things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by wisdom behind it, he did so. So we don't know exactly uh, the reason. Yes. So Al-Madhahab uh, Al-Sunnah, so Al-Madhahab Al-Hanbali, Hanbali Madhahab, uh, says that al-adhan is fard kifaya, is an obligation, is communal obligation upon all the community Muslim members. However, the rest of the madhahab, al-Hanafi, al-Shafi'i, al-Maliki, they have the opinion that it is sunnah mu'akkada. It is highly recommended to make al-adhan, however, it is not an obligation. MashaAllah, so many questions. Bismillah. If you realize after you started calling al adhan, you realize that the time is not in yet, right? This is your question. Not? Yeah, yeah, it is permissible. If you call adhan after the time is in, the time has come, but then you don't make adhan right away. You make al adhan after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, right? It is permissible? Yes. Yes, it is. However, I give you the, the, the second part of this question. If the opposite, if we are calling adhan before the time has come, and then we realize that the time is not in yet, so what should we do? The answer is to stop right away because your adhan is invalid. We are coming right to, to talk about this inshallah ta'ala. But you should st stop and then remake adhan, redo adhan when the time is in. Brother Mustafa, the last question. Okay. During what? Okay. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, this is a good remark, yes. During the COVID in our masjid, Alhamdulillah, we used to make adhan and to perform Salat al-Jama'ah in every single prayer. 
with a very limited number of people, only imams and few people. But alhamdulillah, all the salawat was yani, performed in jama'ah with adhan and iqama. Because we, 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 we had the, the opinion of that it is fard kifayah, communal obligation. So those who think that it is fard kifayah, alhamdulillah, in our masjid, we fulfilled this act of worship. We fulfilled this obligation. <laughs> Shafiq, Bismillah. Say it again. No, we don't. We don't gather people by calling at them. If we want to gather people, there are some other things that we can say. No. As, as, as far as I know, Al Adhan should be performed only to call people to the prayer. This is the definition of Al Adhan. Otherwise, we might need to gather people for us for some other reason. We can uh, use other words, other phrases, other statements, but not the same exact sentences of the adhan, because the adhan is very specific for calling people to the prayer. Okay, Shafiq, you were saying something. Mm -hmm. For those who, ha who, who are in Hanbali Madhab, according to Hanbali Madhab, yes, if they make sure that no one makes the Adhan, they have to do it, right? They didn't hear the Adhan in, in the Masjid. No, it doesn't matter if you hear the Adhan or you don't hear it, right? If you are following Hanbali Madhab as Adhan as Fard Kifay, obligation, communal obligation, it doesn't mean that you have to hear the Adhan every single prayer by your eyes, by your ears, I mean. But you know that in Masjid there are people who are performing Al Adhan, Alhamdulillah, that's enough. But it, you, should, you don't have to hear Al Adhan directly from the Mu'adha. Let's move on, inshallah ta'ala, to the next item. Requirements of Al-Adhan. There are some requirements that need to be met for the Adhan to be valid. What are these requirements? The first one is the entry of the appropriate prayer time. This is number one. Number one. If the time of the prayer is not in, your adhan is invalid, right? There is no need for you to call adhan before the time, the, the prayer time. The second is the order. We are going to discuss later on, inshallah ta'ala, the phrases of adhan. What should we say in adhan? And the order of these sentences should be respected right should be followed and if you mixed up the order of these sentences your adhan is invalid right for example if you say allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar and you say hayya ala salah hayya ala al falah ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah Allahu Akbar, Ashadu Anna Muhammad. You are mixing up the sentences of the Adhan. Your Adhan is not valid anymore. Right? So the order should be respected. The third is continuity of the Adhan. Your Adhan should be continuous. What does that mean? When you start 
calling al adhan Allahu Akbar, Allah, it should be continuous until you finish al adhan right? I mean, do not stop for a while and go uh, somewhere else, go making wudu and then come back and continue. Let's say that some, uh, someone starts making adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then he said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. And then he, he received a phone call. So he started talking, talking 15 minutes, one, even one minute, right? And then comes back, Ashadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. No, you should start over. We are not responsible of what you see in videos, right? <laughs> not everything that we see in social media is valid, right? So people, they share everything uh, wrong and right. So we have to differentiate. And how to differentiate is through knowledge. That's why we are making this session. So people, they know about their deen, about the, the, the adhan, the ibadah of al-adhan. So continuity is a requirement. Never stop and have a gap in your, in your adhan. When you start, you should finish, right? Don't stop, don't talk in between, don't, do outside, don't go outside or do anything else except calling adhan. Yes. You should stop right away and restart from the beginning. Once you realize that the time is not in and now is in, so you stop everything that you said is not valid anymore and you restart over yes if you make a mistake and you realized after finishing the the the, the event for example that you missed ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah what to do and the event is done right should i restart over and uh, confuse people, or sh what should we do? The ulama, they said, it is recommended for you to say it even after you finish, right? After you finish and you realize that you missed one sentence or one phrase, just say it for the sake of, of the adhan to be complete. But, but do not repeat the adhan from scratch. Yes, so the ulama, they said, when you do so, right? So it is only, not loudly, you say it only for the group of people who are with you. Do not say it loudly so people who are away, they get confused. Or they, 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 uh, they receive adhan with disorder in, in its statement. Yes, yes. Continuity? How, how is this big gap? So we have to measure. If he stop cry, he start crying and he cannot continue the adhan, so he should start over, because the gap is too long, right? However, if it is he start crying, but it is a matter of few seconds or so, and then he restart again or he he resumes, alhamdulillah, he can resume and continue. But if the gap is too long, he should start over. Yes. 
Brother Mustafa. We are coming to do this, inshallah. We are coming. We are coming. Bismillah. At what time then, Maghrib? Now? Okay, Bismillah. Inshallah Ta'ala, we resume right after Salat al Maghrib Ta'ala. We are going to cover so many items that are very, very crucial, essential about Adhan. So please come back right after uh, Maghrib prayer. Jazakumullah khayr. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر
أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا استووا واعتدلوا يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنة الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حودا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا يا الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سيجعل لهم الرحمن ودا فإنما يسرناه بلسانك لتبشر به المتقين 
لتبشر به المتقين وتنذر به قوما لدا وكم أهلكنا قبلهم من قرن هل تحس منهم من أحد هل تحس منهم من أحد أو تسمع لهم ركزا سمع الله لمن حمده الله 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 أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله
five. What? What is the I five? I five. What is it? Oh, I know. I don't know. You should I ask I those. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa imam al-mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa ba'd. Inshallah ta'ala, my dear brothers and sisters, we resume our, our second part of Al-Adhan Seminar. We continue what we have started to talk about before Maghrib, inshallah ta'ala. And we were talking before Maghrib about the requirements of Al-Adhan. What are the requirements that should be met in Adhan? We mentioned three of them. The first one is the entry of the appropriate prayer time. The second is the order we should respect the order of the phrases of Al-Adhan. The third one is the continuity. Uh, no gap should be in between when we are calling Adhan. The Adhan should be called continuously. The fourth and the last one is it should be announced according the specific words narrated in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is a very specific way how to call Adhan. What are these sentences of Adhan? What is the order of these sentences and phrases of Adhan? And we should learn this way of Adhan so our Adhan will be valid Adhan and correct. Otherwise, our Adhan will be invalid. If we don't respect if we don't meet any of these requirements, again, the entry of the time, the order, the continuity, and then the specific way how to call Adhan should be respected. These are the four requirements of Adhan. If one of, the, if one of them is, missing out, is missed out, the Adhan is what? Is invalid. So keep them in mind. So inshallah ta'ala, uh, next item is what are these phrases of Al-Adhan? Obviously, we all know uh, the Adhan is very famous. And as I said in, in the beginning of this session, that it is a sign, it is an apparent, uh, apparent sha'ira and ritual of Islam uh, that we should know, we should learn, we should memorize. So Al-Adhan basically has <coughs> these sentences, at least seven of them. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and then Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al-falah, Hayya ala al-falah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. These are the seven sentences of Al Adhan. Of course, there are different ways according to different madhahab how to call Adhan, how many times should you repeat every single sentence. We are going to cover this, inshallah ta'ala, very shortly. But before we go there, uh, uh, we explain briefly what is the meaning of these sentences. Allahu Akbar, of course, Allah is the greatest. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. I testify that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Hayya ala salah Come to prayer. Hayya ala al-falah. 
come to prosperity. Allahu Akbar again, Allah is the greatest. La ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. So as we said, we mentioned in the beginning, it is all about at tawheed It is all about announcing at tawheed and the word of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. What are the different ways how to call adhan and according to which madhab is that? So how many madhab, fiqhi madhab, do we have? Four, are you sure? Okay. So we have four madhab. What are they? Hanafi? No, no, no. Respect the order, the chronology, how to say? Chronological order of these ayyimma, of these scholars. Hanafi, Abu Hanifa was the first. Then, Malik, Ibn Anas. Then, al Shafi'i. Then lastly, al Hanbali. Okay? So we have Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali. So basically, they all agree upon the sentences that we mentioned. But the only difference between some of them is how many times should be repeated every sentence. So this one is to say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, four times, right? Allahu Akbar. And then the rest, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, two times, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, two times, Hayya ala salah, two, Hayya ala al-falah, two, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. This is according to Al-Madhab, Al-Hanbali, and Al-Hanafi, both of them. Hanafi and Hanbali Madhab, they have this Adhan. The most common Adhan in their Madhab is this way. And this is the most famous and well-known Adhan that we hear, right? There is a second way to call Adhan which is to say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, four times, again, the same. However, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, we say it twice. And we call this in fiqh, at tarji'ah. At tarji'ah is to say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, the first one, the, the two first ones, to say them, Sirran, how to say, secretly, silently, to say it, so Mu'adhan, say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, 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 and then, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So this is the way of Shafi'i Madhab. As Shafi'i, they have this tarji'ah. A tarji'ah is that Mu'adhan says this Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah twice silently before he says it loudly. The same in Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Right? Got it? The last one is, who's left? Al-Maliki. Who is Maliki? Huh? I am Maliki, alhamdulillah. Shafiq is Maliki, right? Okay, so the only difference between this Adhan and the two first adhans basically is that the first one, uh, the first sentence, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, it is said only twice, not four. So to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. So if ever you, you hear a mu'adhan, saying Allahu Akbar only twice, do not stop him, do not uh, uh, grab him out <laughs> from the mihrab or from the microphone, 
do not say to him anything because it is a valid way according to al-madhhab al-maliki it is only twice allahu akbar allahu akbar that's enough and then ashhadu an la ilaha illallah uh, actually in this ashhadu an la ilaha illallah so it could be with tarji' or without tarji' now we know, we know what is the meaning of at tarji' at tarji' is to say the first two ones ashhadu an la ilaha illallah twice silently and then we say it loudly it is permissible here to make tarji' or without tarji' so as we uh, as we as you saw here that all the madhahab they have agreed upon the same way of adhan basically the same sentences however what is what is different is the time of repetition how many times they repeat every single sentence of these seven sentences do you have any question so al iqama al iqama is slightly okay al iqama in general is slightly different from al adhan so we say allahu akbar allahu akbar only twice according to all the madhahab except al hanafi and then ashhadu an la ilaha illallah twice ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah uh, i mean once ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah i think madhhab al hanafi has overwhelmed us here so it is only once ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah hayya ala as salah hayya ala al falah once and then what is added here is qad qamat as salah twice qad qamat as salah qad qamat as salah allahu akbar allahu akbar la ilaha illallah this is according the three madhahab except al hanafi al hanafi he just has the same way to call adhan and to be adding what qad qamat as salah twice right so the same way how hanafi makes adhan and adding by adding what qad qamat as salah twice yeah yeah this is what i mentioned okay let me show you something this is the iqama of al madhhab al hanaf except that we add qad qamat as salah right after al hayala we call it al hayala after saying hayala al falah right we add qad qamat as salah twice this is the way how to make iqama in madhhab al hanafi however the three other madhhab as we described earlier let's move on to the next item inshallah ta'ala the requirements of al muazzin of the adhan caller i think uh, many of you you have been waiting for this for this uh, item right so what are the requirements of al muazzin is everyone allowed to make adhan or no this is the main question right is everyone allowed to go and to make adhan to call adhan or not so there are some requirements that every muazzin should meet should make sure that these requirements are fulfilled before he goes forward and make adhan the first one is to be a muslim of course this is very obvious to be a muslim because al adhan from non muslim is invalid right from non muslim is invalid to be male not female as we mentioned previously to be a man so this is a requirement the woman they should not make a then at all he should be male yes it is haram to make a then for the woman 
So it is only for upon the man. Yes. For the woman? No. We explained that before you came, I think. Yeah. If women, a group of women, they are together and there is no male with them, there is no man at all, uh, do they have to make a then? Are they allowed to make a then? No. They still not allowed to make a then. Not allowed to make iqam. They just pray and that's it. Right? Because the adhan has not been made upon women. It is only upon men. Yes. I couldn't hear. Even in the forest, even in the ocean, you don't make... I mean, you can make adhan, you can say these sentences of adhan, it is not يعني, something that you should, uh, you should not touch, but by the intention and the niya to call adhan and to announce the prayer time, it is not allowed for the women to make adhan, right? But you can teach your kids and to say these sentences. You can say the sentences by yourself, right? If you want to say it, but never say it loudly with the intention to call people to come and to pray. Is that clear or not? Alhamdulillah, right. Yes, of course. It is okay to practice Adhan uh, for the sake to improve and to enhance your adhan, your voice, your pronunciation, and so on and so forth. Because you don't have the intention here to make adhan as it is ibadah, to announce people, to announce the prayer time, and to call people to, to the prayer. You can practice adhan only for the sake of practicing and for the sake of improving your adhan, and nothing wrong with that. But never practice adhan in the mic or in, uh, you know, in the uh, and so on and so forth. Yes. We are coming there. Okay. Khalina, we, we, we continue, inshallah. So the first one, to be Muslim. The second, to be a male, not female. The third, to be trustworthy. Trustworthy, Amin. Why is that? Because the Mu'adhan, right, is entrusted to announce the prayer time. So all the community, the Muslim community, are trusting Al Mu'adhan for their prayers. So whenever the Mu'adhan says Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, announce Adhan, without even thinking about whether the time is in or not, we go pray because we trust whom? Al Mu'adhan. So he should be very trustworthy. Yes. No, no, no. There is no connection between Al Adhan and the Salah. So if Al Adhan is invalid, this is his question. Is the prayer invalid as well? The answer is not. Right? So as long as you fulfill the requirements of the prayer itself, your prayer, inshallah, is valid. No matter what, your adhan is invalid or invalid. Right? So the adhan and the salah are disconnected in terms of validity and invalidity. Trustworthy. Number four, sane. He should be stable, mentally stable. It is not crazy, it is not unstable. So it is a requirement 
for the Mu'azzin. Number four, he should be just, right? He should be just, Adl. In Arabic language, we call it Al-Adl. And justness, or uh, it is also a requirement in Hadith, uh, in Hadith field, for the ulama of Hadith to accept a Hadith and to make it authentic, right? One of the requirements about the narrator of the hadith, he should be just and dabit, precise. He should be precise. He should have sharp memory, right? Not known that he forgets and he mixed up statements, no. And just. Just means he has to be religious, right? He has to be uh, a man of religion, not everyone. Just of religion, religious, and so on and so forth. Also, he should be mature, right? What does it mean? If a kid calls Adhan, so the, the Adhan is what? Is invalid, right? But we, we can, we can encourage our kids to call Adhan if they want to practice Adhan outside the prayer time, right? And we still can encourage them to make Adhan the, the, the actual Adhan. How is that? Hmm? By what? Maybe repeating after the Mu'adhan. Or, yani al-adhan, as we said, it is, according to ma the majority of ulama, it is what? Sunnah, right? It is not obligation, right? So, even if a child calls adhan, according to this school, it is sunnah, so valid or invalid, it works, right? It is not a requirement, it is not obligation on us, of course, this is not good. This is extreme. But the best way is to let them practice outside of the prayer time. This is the best way. Yes. No, it has to be only one person to call at them. And in the first hadith, when Abdullah ibn Zubayr saw the adhan in his dream, the Prophet ﷺ told him right away to go to Bilal and to say al adhan to Bilal. At the same time, Bilal was saying the same sentences loudly, was repeating after Abdullah ibn Zayd. But Abdullah ibn Zayd was saying the adhan only for Abdullah ibn Zayd to hear. It was not loudly. However, Bilal was making the adhan loudly. Right? So he should be mature, yes. The age of puberty, the maturity, right? 13, 14, it depends. Sometimes 12, 11. Number seven, he should be knowledgeable of the timings of the prayer. This is a very good point, but not in our time. Alhamdulillah. Because in our time, everything is in the calendar. We have, mashallah, the phone, everything. We have the time of Al-Adhan. We should not make ijtihad and see the sun and the shade and all this his story. We don't care about it. But it is better also for the Mu'adhan, even though, to know about the timings of the prayers. There are very specific time, times of the prayer that the Mu'adhan should learn. Yes, we look at the calendar, the time of the prayer, alhamdulillah, we have them ready for us, uh, made easy for us, but if we learn uh, uh, how to determine the time of the prayer, it would be better for the Mu'adhan, inshallah ta'ala. So these are seven requirements of al-mu'adhan. 
If, of course, this one, we can compromise. It is not a must. But the last six ones, they are requirements. If you don't fulfill all of them, your adhan is invalid. If one of them is missed out, your adhan is invalid, right? Some of ulama, they added to this, not as requirements, but as recommended characteristics to be in the mu'adhan. They said to be sayyid in Arabic language, to be sayyid, to have a good, a loud voice. To have good voice, beautiful voice and loud voice. And there, of course, uh, their proof of that, their evidence, is that the Prophet وسلم, did not command Abdullah ibn Zubair, the one who saw the dream, right? However, he commanded him to teach Bilal radiallahu anhu to make al adhan. And he said, فَإِنَّهُ أَنْدَى مِنْكَ صَوْتًا So the Prophet ﷺ commanded him to go to Bilal and to teach him the adhan. Why? He said, he said because he is louder, he has louder voice than you, he has more beautiful voice than you. And it has both, louder and more beautiful voice than you. So it is recommended for Mu'adhan to have good voice. And how to get good voice? We are coming, inshallah, not this session. Maybe other sessions will follow up with other session, inshallah ta'ala, to talk more about the pronunciation of these sentences and then the, the voice part and the melody part of Al-Adhan. This is a different story. Yes. You are right. Of course, it is, it is permissible to use the microphone. This is by Ijma' unanimously. Of course, now we use the microphone all over the world, right? So coming back to your uh, first part, that uh, maybe we can compromise the loudness of the voice uh, once since we are uh, using the microphone. I can tell you yes, uh, but it is 50-50. So yes and no. Still, the loudness of the voice itself, it can be heard even with microphone or without microphone, right? Sometimes the voice of the person is, 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 is too weak. Even with the microphone, it doesn't shake the, 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 the listener of, of the adhan, right? So it should be with a loud voice that with or without microphone, it shakes and it has an impact, influence uh, on, on, on the listener of Al-Adhan. Uh, so this, this is about the voice and as I said, we are going to uh, cover many, maybe another session or two sessions how to call Adhan and to fix the mistakes, the common mistakes about Al-Adhan. But let me uh, continue and uh, say that inshallah ta'ala. So, as we mentioned, some of the recommendation, w one second. So, as we said, the ulama, they added to these requirements to be a loud voice, good voice, plus for the mu'adhan to be with good, good conduct, right? To be a good example, to be a good Muslim, right? And on the top of that, to have appropriate dress, a proper dress while calling Adhan. 
And this is very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Never make a than when you are dressing, when, when your aura is not covered, right? Never make a than when you are dressing a short, when you are wearing a short, or when you are yani, dressing something, it is not appropriate for this maqam of adhan. The color of adhan and calling people to perform adhan, we should start by ourselves. We should be a good example for the entire Muslim community. So the dress, the good conduct, to be a good example, to be religious, and to, be, to have a good voice. Al mm Wudu, -hmm. we are coming to Al Wudu, inshallah. So, requirements, it is not a requirement. Al Wudu, it is not a requirement. Sunnas of Al Adhan. We are coming to the Sunnas of Al Adhan. So, these are, if you want to say, these are the requirements of al muazzin and we talked about the requirements of al-adhan can you remind me about the requirements of al-adhan of al-adhan the entry of the time continuity The order, the order of the sentences. And then, say it again. Yeah, the way how to perform should be according to the sentences that the Prophet ﷺ taught, taught us, right? So these are the four requirements of Al-Adhan. And we talked about the requirements of the caller of al -adhan. Now, what are the sunnas of al -adhan? Sunnah is something that is recommended. If we do it, alhamdulillah, we get the reward, we make our adhan even uh, more valuable, more reward, inshallah ta'ala, but it is not a requirement. If we don't do it, our adhan is still valid, inshallah ta'ala. The first one is to recite Al-Adhan and we, I said to recite Al-Adhan means to make it similar to recitation of Al-Quran. What does that exactly mean? Should I respect Ahkam Al-Tajweed as Al-Quran Al-Kareem? Should I make Ghunna and Mad and Qalqala and all these different rules in Al-Adhan or it is different? So the, the term recite Al-Adhan, it means two parts. The first one is to respect the minimum of the pronunciation of the Makharaj, the, the, the articulation points of the letters and some of the mudud, al madd al tabi'i at least, and we are going to explain more inshallah later on. The second part of this is to make al adhan melodious, with melody, right? Do not make al adhan as we are reading a text. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, ashadu an la Muhammad Rasulullah. This is not the way how we should make adhan, right? It is not invalid if we do so, but it is highly recommended to make it yani, more beautiful. We beautify the, 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 the adhan with our voices, with our makharij, and to use the melody in our, in our adhan. Uh, and also, this uh, word recite, it includes something else which, which is Al-Adhan should be given slowly. Al-Adhan should be given slowly. Never make Al-Adhan quickly and fastly. So make Al-Adhan slowly. Make it yani, long. Make the Adhan 
long. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It is recommended to extend. Rather than saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Why is that? Why we make the, the adhan long? Why? Yes. We give the people more time to get ready and to come to, to, the, to the masjid and to pray with us, to reach al jamaa right? And then what? Hmm? Yes, so we make it beautiful for the listeners, Muslims and non-Muslims. Because as we mentioned in the beginning, that Al-Adhan is very, very powerful. So when we purify Al-Adhan with our voice, you never know. You, may, you might touch someone who is non-Muslim uh, to soften his heart and to make him uh, interested in learning about Islam because only of your Adhan. Because only of your voice, right? The way how to make adhan. So we should make it long. So we give people more time to enjoy this adhan and to give more people the time to get ready, inshallah ta'ala, for the prayer. Yes. As I said, this is not a requirement. Okay, so for your question, as I said, first of all, this is not a requirement. Making the adhan long and making the, the adhan slow, it is a sunnah that is recommended to do whenever we have the ability to do it, right? But if we don't have this ability to do it and we have to rush and to make it very quick, right? For one reason or the other, it is, we can compromise this, right? So the most important part that we pray on time, we have our time to pray. However, Adhan, if we need to make it quick, Alhamdulillah, we make it quick, right? And nothing wrong with that. So it depends on the situation, of course, of wh where, where you are in RPI or wherever you are. So you can measure uh, the maslaha in your situation and act accordingly inshallah ta'ala but this, this is not a requirement it is a recommendation so we can do it slow if we have the ability and we get more reward inshallah ta'ala if not it is permissible and still a valid adhan this is the first sunnah the second sunnah is to raise the voice as much as we can right to raise the voice as much as we can and we mention so many times what are the reasons behind raising the voice in adhan do you have a question how much decibel or <laughs> as much as you can right do not scream, right? Do not damage your uh, vocal cords, but at the same time, try to raise your voice in a beautiful way, not uh, to raise your voice to scream and yell, right? It is only to raise your voice in a beautiful way that can reach more people 
But now with the microphones, alhamdulillah, it makes everything easier for us. The third sunnah to be directed towards the qibla. It is a sunnah to make al-adhan while we are directed to the qibla. If not, it is still valid. If I make adhan like this, qibla is there and I make adhan towards the, the opposite of qibla. So it is, inval it is valid because we are talking about sunnahs. Say it again. Form adhan, yes. It is a sunnah. It is not, it is not, we, we should differentiate between sunnah and requirements and wajib, obligation, right? So we mentioned the obligations and the requirements of al-adhan. Now, beyond that, it is a sunnah. If we do it, alhamdulillah, we get the reward. If we don't do it, the adhan is still valid. However, of course, uh, there is no one who wants to direct himself to a, another direction other than qibla, uh, yani, uh, willingly, right? So if we have, we, we do know the, the direction of the qibla and it is, it is made easy for us to direct the qibla and to make the adhan, alhamdulillah. But sometimes, and some ulama they said, uh, especially in some masajid, uh, you could find the microphone yani, fixed mm, in, in, one, in a way that it is not directed to the opposite of al-qibla. So you cannot direct al-qibla when you are making adhan. So in that case, you make adhan as it is, right? In some conferences rooms or in some <coughs> non-Muslims, I, I mean, and if we, we, we have event over there and we need to call adhan and the microphone is put in a way that we cannot change the direction of the microphone, we cannot uh, hold it. So we just make adhan and let everyone hear uh, al-adhan inshaAllah ta'ala. So directing al-qibla is not a requirement. We are coming. We are coming. <laughs> it is not a requirement. It is. It is a sunnah. I mean, there is no one. I assume that there is no one that willingly he wants to. Uh, to direct himself to uh, New York City or whatever, I don't know. So it should be directed to the Qibla. As long as we know Al Qibla, there is no obstacle, there is no reason for us to make Al Adhan in other direction. Wallahu a'al. Number. Say it again. Makro? Even if it is makro, so you don't, you don't, you, it, it is not makro, by the way, it is not makro. It is not makro. It is not makro. It is only sunnah. If, if we do it, we get the reward. If we don't do it, nothing on us, right? Number four to be on state of wudu, to be purified. This is your point, I think. So having wudu while making adhan is requirement? No. If a mu'adhan is making adhan without wudu, willingly, he knows, knowingly, he knows that he does not have wudu. Should he stop making wudu? Should he stop making adhan? and then make wudu and comes back? No. He can continue and the adhan is valid. However, if he makes wudu and uh, to be in state of wudu, 
it is too much better and it is a sunnah that it is encouraged right to do number five to stand up to call a van while standing up right do not make a van while you are sitting or laying down or Allahu A'lam and it is a sunnah as well it is not a requirement to make a van while standing I have a question I have a question, not you. <laughs> it is a sunnah, as I said, right? So I will, I will, I will reform your question in another way. So what if in a jama'a congregation and there are two people they want to make a van right two people they mo they want to make a van one of them they can he cannot stand up for some reason right medical reason health reason he cannot stand up and the other one alhamdulillah his full health he can stand up so in this case it is recommended for the healthy one to make an adhan right because it is a sunnah and it is better for us to fulfill as sunnah as much as sunnah as we can right so if we have the ability to fulfill this sunnah to practice this sunnah alhamdulillah we have someone they have the same performance the same requirements so the one who can stand up should make al adhan and the other one inshallah next time when he gets relieved inshallah so uh, another thing about this issue in some masajid there is as the imam is 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 the one who is responsible for the prayer right there is a person who is responsible to make adhan he is the official muazzin as we have in our muslim countries right what if this muazzin something happens to him and for some reason he cannot stand up anymore for the prayer for the adhan should he still make adhan or we should substitute him mm? no we don't substitute him if he doesn't want but if he willingly he wants to uh, to be substitute right so alhamdulillah but if not he is the official muazzin as long as all the requirements of the muazzin are there this is not a requirement it is a sunnah alhamdulillah he has been doing al adhan for years while standing up now something happened to him and he will not be able to stand up anymore he continues to make adhan alhamdulillah right yes So it depends on the situation. We cannot say uh, fatwa, yani general fatwa, right? We have to, to see both person and we assess, we uh, evaluate, we measure uh, where is the maslaha? Is this difference of, of the beauty of the voice worthy to substitute the standing up? So I don't know. We case by case, we cannot say something general for everyone. Let us continue. Okay, to stand up. This is number five. Number six, to put his arms on his sides. To put his arms on his sides while calling Adhan. This is another sunnah, right? Is it a requirement? No, I can make Adhan while doing like this. It is not wrong, it is not incorrect, it is not invalid, 
right? It is a sunnah to do like this. Some of the ulama, they said, uh, uh, actually, it is a sunnah to put your finger, this finger, in your ears while you make a then. And they have explanation of that. The explanation is when you clock your ears so you don't hear clearly, so you make your voice loudly and loudly. That helps you to make your voice louder, right? And putting the arms on the side, also the ulama, they have explanation of that. Why is that? First of all, they said for the mu'adhan to be seen from people that he is making adhan. It is a different shape, different attitude that we know this person, even if we don't hear what he's saying, we know that he's calling adhan. Only by seeing him putting his arms on his sides. The second, they said that this position helps the mu'adhan to have more nafas, to have more breath, to elongate his breath, and to have more space in his lungs for the air to come in, right? When you do like this, so the air comes more in your lungs. Clear enough? This is a doctor you can explain to us. Is it, is it true or...? Huh? Yes. Alhamdulillah. He said yes. Yes. Yeah, it depends on the person, so nothing is obligatory for the mu'adhan to do. So whatever he feels better, right? Some of the people, they feel good when they put their fingers in their ears. Some others, they don't feel good. They don't hear themselves. Some others, maybe even putting his arms on his sides, he's not comfortable with that. He can make a then while doing the, yani, his arms down. And making a then, nothing wrong with that. Yes. More breath. So this Dr. Zahad can explain to you <laughs> later on. Okay, let us move. Okay, now, last question. Takbir, like this. Yeah, the same, I think. Uh, so, al uh, adhan actually, it starts with what? Allahu Akbar, right? And it finishes with the same, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. So, it is a sign of, for, for, for the, the, the person who is seeing this person calling adhan, so he knows that he's making takbir or calling uh, adhan, and you know, it is a very specific position and shape. There are some other sunnas, actually, I want to share with you. It is recommended for the mu'adhan إِذَا بَلَغَ أَنْ يُدِيرَ رَأْسَهُ يَمِينًا وَشِمَالًا So it is recommended for the mu'adhan when he reaches al hayala What does it mean al hayala Hayala al-salah, hayala al-falah, both of them, right? When he reaches Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al-falah, it is recommended to him to turn his head to the right and to the left. Right? It is a sunnah, it is not a requirement. Right? So now the first question. How to turn the head? I mean, when I, I'm saying Hayya ala salah, should I say Hayya ala salah Hayya ala salah and then Hayya ala falah Hayya ala falah or should I say Hayya ala salah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala falah Hayya ala falah According to the majority of the ulama the second way is the correct 
is to say both Hayy ala salah to the right, both Hayy ala al-falah to the left. Right? And the ulama, they said, you should turn only your head, not your legs and body. So do not move with your legs. In other words, do not do this. Oh, this is the qibla. So we are facing the qibla, right? It is a sunnah. <laughs> it is not obligation. So this is the way. So if you do so, this is not the correct way. Because I, I moved my legs. So my legs should facing the qibla. Should be facing the qibla while I turn my head to the right, to the left, right? Without turning my legs. Got it? So this is a sunnah. Ulama, they said, now, because we have the microphones and this, this sunnah, there is no need anymore for this sunnah, right? So don't be very uh, eager to make this sunnah at the expenses of the voice to not to be heard and clearly heard by the people. Sometimes some people, they turn their heads and of course the, the, the voice, it's, it is not reachable uh, by the microphone correctly, so the voice got lost. So in that case, how is better to get the voice heard clearly or to perform this sunnah? Of course, the voice, the priority is for the voice to be heard, right? The best way is to combine both of them if we are able to. If not, the voice is first. Also, it is recommended for the mu'adhan in the adhan of Salat al-Fajr, only for Fajr prayer, to say after Hay Allah again, after saying Hay Allah Salah, Hay Allah Falah twice, to say what? As Salatu Khayrum Minan Naum. As Salatu Khayrum Minan Naum twice. The meaning of this sentence is that As Salah, the prayer, is better than sleep. Right? As Salatu Khayrum. Mean and no, twice, only in Salat al-Fajr, and the technical word of this we call it at-tathweeb, at-tathweeb. When the muaddin says al-Salat uh, khayr min al this is called at-tathweeb, right? It is a sunnah, a recommendation. It is not a requirement. And uh, lastly. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, before we move to another item. It is recommended for the one who hears Al-Adhan to say after the, the Mu'adhan, to say the same thing. And there is a great uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he says, إذا سمعتم المؤذن فقولوا مثل ما يقول. Whenever you hear the muaddin calling adhan, فقولوا مثل ما يقول. So say whatever he says. Say the same thing as he says. ثم صلوا علي فإنه من صلى علي صلاة صلى الله بها عليه عشرة. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then send salawat upon me because whoever sends salawat upon me, Allah will send salawat upon him ten times due to his salawat. So we should, after making the adhan, we should say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam or any any kind of, any way how to, to send salawat to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But before we get there, going back to saying after the Mu'adhan. 
So while Mu'adzin saying Allahu Akbar, we should say Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, we should say Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, same. Hayya ala salah, which we should not say Hayya ala salah, right? We should say La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Why is that? Because Hayya ala salah is come to the prayer. Come to prayer. So we should not say come to prayer. No, no one is listening to us. No one is hearing us, right? People, they are listening to the mu'adhan, right? But for us, we should say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله Why is that? حي على الصلاة Come to the prayer. We cannot fulfill this obligation of praying and come to the masjid, come to the congregation without the power, the help, the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the meaning of لا حول ولا قوة we have no strength, no power except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why whenever al muadzin reaches Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al-falah, we should say La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. The ulama, they said, uh, what about in Adhan al-Fajr, al-Tathweeb, when the muadzin says, Al-Salatu khayrun min al nawm what should we say? Huh? As-salatu khayrun min al-naw. Right? So, فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَقُولُ Just say whatever he says. As the Mu'azdin says. Except for al-hay'ala. Except for hay'ala al-salah, hay'ala al-falah. We should say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. So, the Prophet ﷺ said, Then, صلوا علي فإنه من صلى علي صلاة صلى الله بها عشرا. Whoever sends salawat upon me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send salawat upon him ten times. Now the question, what is the difference between a salat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the Prophet ﷺ and Salat al-Malaika, the angels, they send salawat to the Prophet ﷺ upon the Prophet ﷺ and sending salat from the believers upon the Prophet ﷺ. You know the ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي Indeed, Allah and His angels they are, they are sending salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then, all you who believe, send salawat upon him. Right? So, three types of salawat. We have the salat of Allah, the salat of the angels, and the salat of the believers upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What is the difference now between the three? Do you know? Anyone knows in this room? Yes. Ad-du'a. Alhamdulillah. As-salawat that we send as believers to the Prophet ﷺ is ad-du'a. It means that we make du'a for the, the Prophet ﷺ. We make du'a that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward his messenger ﷺ to increase him, to give him the status and the maqam, the level in the Jannah, right? This is kind of dua. When you say, Sallallahu ala Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is a kind of dua to our beloved Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? Requesting for what? Blessings. Actually, the, the salat of al malaika upon the Prophet وسلم, it is istighfar, is to seek forgiveness to the Prophet وسلم, right? A salat of al malaika upon the Prophet وسلم, is istighfar. How did we understand that? The scholars understood that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a couple times so the angels, the description of the angels, one of the characteristics of the angels 
that they make constantly istighfar to the believers. And this is one of the missions of the angels. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave and assigned some uh, very specific missions to his angels. One of them is tasbih. One of them is to make istighfar to the believers. They make istighfar to all the believers. So this is number two, istighfar. The angels upon the Prophet وسلم, is to make istighfar. Number three, what about the salat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his messenger? Inna Allah ha wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabi. Yes. So honoring the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Huh? Al-Mala'il-A'la is to mention the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his high, high uh, gathering and high uh, gathering that who are the angels in the Mala'il-A'la, in the Samawat. Actually, the ulama, they said that a salat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam basically is to shower his rahmah upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is the rahmah of Allah to be showered upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, salatullah is the rahmah of Allah. Salat al-malaika, the angels, is what? Is istighfar and salat of the believers is to make dua for our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this hadith, ثُمَّ سَلُوا اللَّهَ لِيَ الْوَسِيلَةِ فَإِنَّهَا مَنْزِلَةٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ لَا تَنْبَغِي إِلَّا لِعَبَدٍ مِّنْ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ وَأَرْجُوا أَنْ أَكُونَ أَنَا هُ He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then after sending salawat upon me, after you hear al-adhan, then ask Allah, to give me al-wasila. Ask Allah to give me al-wasila because it is a place in a paradise which is not for everyone except for a slave from the slaves of Allah and I hope that I am him. I am this slave. So the Prophet وسلم, is encouraging us to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as weak believers to give and to grant his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this high maqam which is called al-wasila fa'innaha manzilatun it is a level it is a rank in the paradise that is only for it is made only for one person one slave of Allah and he said وَأَرْجُوا أَنْ أَكُونَ أَنَهُ I hope that I am this person and he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that, and whoever says this dua after making adhan, حَلَّتْ لَهُ الشَّفَاعَةِ My shafa'a, my intercession on the Day of Judgment will be lawful for this person. Can you imagine? You can gain the intercession, a shafa'a, وَمَا أَدْرَاكْ So on the Day of Judgment, when everybody is in need of shafa'a, is in need of help, it comes from the best of the creation who has been given the great shafa'a, a shafa'a al uzma that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A shafa'a al uzma is to intercede for all the humans from Adam alayhi salam until the last human being. Right? How is that? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will intercede for all the humans with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start the reckoning, to start al-hisab. And we all know the famous hadith of that. This is a shafa'atul uzma, the great, the major shafa'a that the Prophet sallallahu has been given. The other shafa'a is for the believers. 
Allah, the Prophet وسلم, would come on the day of judgment to intercede for the believers. And what is the characteristic, one of the characteristics of these believers to gain a shafa'ah of the Prophet وسلم, is simply to make this dua right after every adhan. It is very short dua, but you gain a lot. You gain the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, this dua, Allahumma rabba hadhi da'wati al-tamma wa salati al-qa'ima ati muhammadan il-wasilata wal-fadila wa ba'athu maqaman mahmoodan il-lazhi wa'attah. This is the dua that we should memorize and we should make after every single adhan. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, many people I, 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 I noticed that in our masjid, in other masjid, sometimes the, the mu'adhan is calling adhan, right? And a person comes in to the masjid. And of course, there is tahiyyat al-masjid. So, should he pray tahiyyat al-masjid while the mu'adhan is performing adhan, or should he wait? Why should he wait? He should wait to gain this reward, right? He should wait only to gain this reward, to get the opportunity to make this dua right after the adhan. Because making two rak'ah, tahayat al-masjid, can wait. We can wait a few seconds, few minutes, until the mu'adhan is done, and we make tahayat al-masjid. So there is no worry about tahayat al-masjid. We will get the reward of tahayat al-masjid. However, if we miss the, the end of the adhan while we, we, we are praying, and then we miss out this great reward of saying this dua. Yes. Mm -hmm. Regardless, regardless, khutbat al-jumu'ah or... So we have different opinions. The, the issue in khutbat al-jumu'ah, of course, is slightly different because if, if you don't pray tahiyyat al-masjid while the, 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 the adhan is being called, you might miss some part of the khutbah, right? And listening to the khutbah is very crucial and essential in jumu'ah prayer. So this is the only worry. But according to the majority of ulama, they said even you find the, 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 the khatib is making the khutbah on the day of Friday and you enter the masjid, you still can pray to rak'ah, tahiyyat al-masjid. However, Maliki madhab, he does not allow that. He does not allow that. So this is a fiqhi issue, insha'Allah ta'ala. Uh, what else? So we are done with these slides, inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we have covered all the items uh, that we plan to cover. However, this session should be followed by other sessions. We are going to talk about the pronunciation and the way how to call adhan, inshallah ta'ala. But the time now is not, uh, is not, is not enough for us to cover this. But inshallah ta'ala, we will announce for another session to be held in our masjid and we'll discuss how practically how to make adhan in practical way. How to make adhan, what are the common mistakes. And I give you, for example, just a heads up from now to, to have an idea how it's going to work. So we are going to cover the adhan sentence by sentence, right? And to perform al adhan and to mention the common mistakes that we should avoid. For example, here, Allahu Akbar. This is the, the sentence, right? Or we can say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar twice. So the first word, we are going to go word by word, letter by letter. So there are a couple mistakes that can be done, committed in this word. Some of the people, they might say, Allahu Akbar. 
without extending the mud. So there is a mud after a lamb. Allah. You see, it is extended. It is long. So never say Allahu Akbar. This is a distortion in the name of Allah. Allahu with, with mud. It should be with mud. So do not cut off this mud. Do not say Allahu Akbar. And this is a common mistake. For example, another mistake that we should avoid. Never extend who. Do not say Allahu Akbar. There is no mud. Allah's name is Allahu. It is not Allahu. Right? So these mistakes, they are being made and committed and we should avoid. Right? So Allahu Akbar. Do not say Allahu Akbar. Do not say Allahu Akbar. The third, do not say Allahu Akbar. Allah. Allahu Akbar. Do not change Hamza of Akbar into well. Do not say Allahu wa, Akbar. You see wa, it becomes wa. It is not Allahu Akbar, it is Allahu ak, a, Akbar. Al Hamza should be strong enough and heard enough, right? Allahu Akbar, a, Akbar. Never say Allahu Akbar. Because we are distorting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah ta'ala, uh, there is more to discuss uh, in this uh, uh, how, to, how to pronounce Al-Adhan inshallah ta'ala and uh, we will announce inshallah ta'ala uh, another session to be held in our masjid and we are going to cover sentence by sentence all the mistakes that may happen and how to avoid them inshallah ta'ala the proper pronunciation how to perform Adhan the right way and then maybe later on we can hold another session to talk about the advanced level. How to purify our voices. What are the ways to make our adhan attractive, to make our adhan beautiful, to make our adhan powerful, uh, <clears throat> and to make our adhan, if you want to say, melodious, with melody. So it is another science and another art, inshallah ta'ala, we can touch upon this. Uh, later on insha'Allah ta'ala so before we conclude uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, put, to, to, put, to, put, to put barakah in our gathering we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to make this gathering uh, to put this gathering in our scales on the day of judgment of hasanat uh, and we thank all of you for coming alhamdulillah i am very glad to have this big number of people attending uh, this session and then session this is a good sign that you are eager and keen to learn about your religion and to learn about this great ibadah this act of worship that as i said it repeatedly performed every single day and that is very related and attached to the prayer the main principle pillar of Islam, which is the daily five prayers. Uh, we ask, uh, we thank you all for coming, and we thank also Brother Hussam, uh, who advertised for this uh, for this session and uh, who live streamed it. Alhamdulillah, and who make all the setup and all the things. Alhamdulillah, Taala, that we enjoyed during this session. Jazakum Allah khair. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك